fourth camp here in Sacramento to open the season. Just how is this one different, especially with the expectations being a little different? I think that the, the expectations probably is, is the, the only thing that's different. Uh, but other than that, it's, you know, the uh, same thing every year. Uh, focus on details, a lot of teaching. But, uh, you know, just trying to, trying to get a get a conditioning up and just, you know, learn new things, whatever. I was just mentioning the, the expectations are up. That's from a lot of us on the outside. What about you guys on the team? Are your expectations raised more now this year? Too? Yeah, 100%. Uh, we're disappointed how it finished last year, and, you know, with the guys being injured. So I think we, we thought we was going to have a great year last year, but obviously because the injuries we didn't, but now we got a few additions, so I think we're going to have a year. I know physicality has been a big emphasis in this camp yeah. from Mike specifically, but from the bigs, we expect that physicality. What kind of physicality are you seeing from the guards and the wings? Uh, I mean, that's what coaches ask us to do. Just play, play, you know, play physical, help each other out. You know, just and the, the, the big emphasis is just playing fast this year. So we're trying to play as fast as we can and help each other defensively, sitting in the gaps, and just be on the string by people. You know, guarding together. How much do you enjoy getting up and down the floor and running the fast break with these guys? Too? I don't. I don't mind it. I, I always, you know, I was always been a good runner, so. I enjoy playing in, a, in an open court and with somebody like Fox and, and uh, Malik and Domas who play fast, it's, it's easy to do. You've got a couple of young bigs that are here. How are they taken to the coaching and, trying, and learning all the camp? Uh, they're doing a great job. Uh, they, they, they're very coachable. They're, they're, they're open to you know, uh, uh, listening and you know, getting coached. Uh, I think they're doing a great job so far. This is your 12th year. This state being sure, how much do you grab those younger guys and put them aside and try to coach them up? As I, maybe you act coach I'm them. still getting better there, but I'm, I'm definitely trying to, you know, teach them here and there little things, you know, uh, the, the little details and try and do as much as I can. How crazy is it this is year 12 for you? Yeah, it's insane. I don't feel like it, but I still feel like I'm in year five or six, something like that. But, uh, you know. It's, it's a blessing. And health-wise, sorry, health-wise, this is uh, like the last couple of years in Sacramento. You've actually been really, really healthy yeah. as opposed to when you were younger having some injuries. How how much has this staff helped you sort of get your body doing yeah. the right way? Uh, I mean, definitely helped a lot. It's the the, uh, the weight room guys, you know, just keeping our body strong. We just do a lot of lifting. It's kind of prevention, injury prevention. But these guys are unbelievable. But plus, just being in a year 12, kind of put on some weight, just getting stronger definitely helps. I know uh, it's you still got weekend work to do, but the first at least five day week from, I guess, day one on Tuesday yeah. to now, what have you seen? What kind of growth have you seen? How much better has this team gotten? Uh, I think we just we put, we put in a lot of new things, kind of just learn all our concepts and the principles of what we're going to do defensively. So, kind of, you know, day one, it's a lot of teaching, but day four, you can see guys start picking it up, everybody, you know, just start applying it in game situations. So, uh, but we got the same core from last year or last year, so, and you guys just kind of, you know, trying to fit in and learn those things. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Sort of a new adventure for you. How has camp been so far with a new team and learning everything you have to? Uh, you know, it's going pretty well. You know, just learning the new plays, defensive schemes, uh, kind of all the same, but, you know, different terminology for uh, different places I've been, so. You know, just picking up on that and just uh, learning the place, that's pretty much it. Is there some overlap with tech, uh, with sort of the, I don't know, the lingo from one spot to the next? Uh, I mean, it's, it's kind of the same, but like maybe one thing will be different. Like they'll say, uh, like war over, we get over, or it's like sometimes blow it up. Like it means the same thing, if you get what I'm saying. But yeah, stuff like that. Outside of Keegan, the, the wing depth has been a, a question with this team going into the season. That also creates a lot of opportunity. What have you? What do you see from the opportunity and your ability to really help at that position with this group? Uh, you know, just come in, just be, try to be the best defender out there, run the floor, don't do too much, just doing all the dirty work uh, and making my open shots when I get them and just making the right play. Not trying to do too much, just keeping it simple. You mentioned the dirty work. It's, it takes a special kind of player to enjoy doing that kind of work. What do you enjoy about putting in that grind? Uh, I feel like it's just who I've always been as a player, even college, uh, just, just to get extra minutes. So it just always stuck with me, just doing the little things, you know, it adds up and uh, it makes it, it adds up to a win in a game. Uh, you know, winning and losing is a close margin. So those plays add up, I would say. Who have you most enjoyed guarding and, and what, have, what has been your experience guarding some of these guys that are your teammates? Uh, guarding Fox, man, she just too, super quick. It's nothing like, you can't even, can't do nothing about it. You know, he's got to make it hard. Uh, DeMar as well, can't jump on his pump fake, stuff like that. Sabonis, strong down there. Got to be 
can't you gotta be tough down there with him. So, you know, I feel like me just playing against those type of players is getting me better as well and prepare for the season. So teams have used players like yourself against Fox a lot in the last couple of years. How important is it to have someone in camp that can defend like you and the long athletic, you know, six foot eight guy? to sort of try to slow him down and get him ready for what's going to uh, come just next. Just throwing different things at him that he probably hasn't seen or, you know, just trying to make it hard on him as much as possible with my length and stuff like that. Uh, even though he gets past me, I'll still be on the side of him, have my hands up, you know, just try to make it hard for him, you know, just because in the game he's going to see that and maybe some more stuff. So that's all I'm trying to do. What's up about Jamar's uh, home fakes? There are ones that you can't go for, but then everybody knows. <laughs> yeah, so like, what, what's, what's the key to like, uh, not going for it? Just know your, knowing the personnel, you know, I know in the – in the moment, scrimmaging, you know, you're not really thinking about it, but you got to always lock in, just remember who you're guarding. Remember, I think he got a rook, like he was driving fast, and I'm like, oh, he about to pump it. He pump it, got the rook. I was like, see, yeah, you're a rook, you don't know yet. So it's all good. You just got to know your personnel, I said. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Jim. Thank you. Thank you. One. A lot, a, lot of, a lot of pressure from Malik. A lot of pressure from Malik. <laughs> I like it, though. I like it. Screw it. Yes. <laughs> Mike, we're at day four. Just this is a day where some of the ice bags start to come out and everything. How's everyone feeling? How's everyone holding up? Uh, everybody's doing pretty good. You know, you're you're 100 correct. You know, guys are starting to feel the bumps and the bruises uh, from the practices that we've had. But uh, I, I, I give our guys credit, man. Uh, they've been locked in. They're trying to pay attention to the details and uh, trying to be present all the time. They're playing extremely hard. Uh, you feel they're connected and they're starting to get it. And uh, I also give uh, my coaching staff a lot of credit. Uh, they've done a fantastic job, uh, not only throughout the course of summertime, but uh, through, the, through the early stages of training camp, my, my staff has been really, really good. They've been on top of it. And I think uh, you know, they're only going to get better just like uh, the players are. Is there anything these guys are asking to do or wanting to do more of? Are you taking the concept they say, I want to work on this more, I enjoy doing this? Is there anything specific that they like doing? Uh, I mean, they like playing, you know, and, and you know, the drill work, they understand it's a necessary evil, uh, but they've been good with it. And um, so we, we're, we're going to try to continue to get them uh, opportunities to play more so that they can work on their game conditioning. Um, and uh, while trying to still sprinkle in some, some breakdowns to where we do drill work for stations, as we call them. And so the guys, the guys have been good. Whatever we've thrown at them, they've been gracious enough to accept and try to execute at a high level. Over the right. years that you've been here, there's been opportunity with your specifically wing depth for, for guys if they play hard and they hustle and they work hard. I'm doing the, the dirty work that Jalen McDonald was telling us. But the offensive side is, is important too. When you're looking for someone who gives that emphasis on the defensive end, what do you need from them offensively to keep them, I guess, on the court so they can do that one? One of our staples is uh, attacking the offensive glass. And so if not only if they go every single time when they're in the right position, but if they go and get a hand on it, that's something that can really, really stand out. And, and, and Trey was big for us last year. I, I think he was by far, uh, Keegan was too, but, but Trey, in terms of subs, he was probably our best crash guy. And, and on top of him crashing, he got his hand on the basketball. So that, that's huge. Uh, running the floor. Um, you know, we have the fastest guy in the game uh, in, in Fox. Uh, we have probably the best passing big man, man arguably in the game, or at least one of one of two or maybe three in, in, in Domas. And so these guys are going to get you the ball. And we're emphasizing the throw-ahead pass or the kick-ahead pass from the back court to the front court. So get to the corners. Do your darnest to get to the corners, flatten the defense out, create that space so a guy like Fox can attack before the defense is set, and now you're going to get a catch-and-shoot horse shot because he's going to get off of it. So crashing the glass, running the floor, cutting the score, everything you do, put it, 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 it's emphasized with a hard movement in, an or, in order to score or when you touch that paint to create a tag from the weak side so your teammates can get open. You do those things and you're going to have a chance to get on the floor, especially if you're defending at a high level. We saw a bunch yesterday with scrimmage and you know, we anticipated the issue of the game, so we're going to get part with you. We saw with DeRozan, and bonus, and I key on three. Specifically with the Rosen, what, what do you think the potential is with that? 
tell you what, it's it can be off the charts, and, and mainly because uh, of uh, uh, Demar's ability to pass the basketball. You know, I said this before. You know, you think that okay, hey, he's a guy that's going to ISO on that long post area, or he's going to ISO right off the elbow. But man, he could bring in the transition. Uh, he could play the pick and roll game. And now the DHO game is a different element to where he may not be easily blitzed if he has it going. And so <clears throat> once he gets that ball, if you, if you go under uh, and Domas uh, does the DHO uh, low enough, it's a wrap. If you chase him over and he gets to a sweet spot, it's a wrap in terms of scoring. But uh, his added ability of playmaking, whether it's hitting Domas in the pocket or, or because of who he is, the gravity of him touching the paint, drawing somebody else, his ability to spray the basketball, uh, it, it could be really good for us. Is there a perfect world situation? I mean, I know there's teams that are starting preseason games tonight uh, after just a few days. If in your mind, if you're you know, constructing your perfect plan, when would you like to see your first opposition in terms of preseason games? I, you know, I, I like the way our schedule is right now. <clears throat> you know, we, we've had, I don't know, we've been twice already, so we've had we'll practice with a six for us maybe, something like that. Um, and, and so for us to be where we are right now, we're going to come in, we're going to scrimmage amongst ourselves tomorrow. So we're going to treat it like a game. Uh, we'll give them Sunday off uh, and then have a couple more practices before our, our first preseason game. I, I like how the schedule is. And, and uh, by the time that first preseason game comes around, our guys will really be chomping at the bit to go play somebody else. And so it'll be a good, a good thing for all of us to see another color game. Do you think we're Mike. tired of beating up on each other? And how much do you like seeing that from them, especially when you're emphasizing physicality? Yeah, they get t- they get tired of it, you know. And, and sometimes it can get a little chippy, which you you like as, as a coach. You know, you don't want anybody to just keep getting hit and not saying anything. You, know, you want somebody to say something or stand up to whoever's doing whatever they're doing and, 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 and say something back and let them know, hey, I'm here. Not just on the floor, but I'm here verbally too. And I'm going to keep coming. That little thing ain't going to stop me from coming. So, so you like that. You, uh, you know, you know they're, 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 they're not to the point yet where they want to see another jersey, but uh, it's going to come sooner than later. So Mike, you mentioned <laughs> I've been in the last You get five. I accept it. As long as it's going to Okay. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, like last season, you, know, you always emphasize that you always want to the Montes or you near him on the floor in a second. You know, now you have more options with Lamar. Is that something that you and your coaching staff are looking at, you know, as far as uh, changing that dynamic? Yeah, you know, <clears throat> you have the luxury now of, of keeping uh, two of the three guys on there. And you're throwing a guy like Keith and you're throwing a guy like Malik, you know, and, and uh, it, it really adds to what you can do when you're going to yourself on the bench. So uh, you're conscious of it, um, but we, I haven't really sat down uh, with a minute sheet yet and said, hey, this is what I'm going to do. So, it, it does, definitely does add more excitement to the table when we're talking about the different teams. Mike, you mentioned the other day sometimes you have a coach walk with Devin from drill to drill. Yeah. Obviously, so he can see what's going on. But how important is it as part of that to also keep him involved with the team rather than ISO the way during his rehab so he still feels a, a big part of things? Uh, it's extremely important because, you know, in, in our business, uh, when you're removed from the team, you, it can be a lonely feeling, and, and you can feel like people have forgotten about you. But uh, uh, you know, we, we uh, our coaches found uh, a, a little thing on him on online where when he signed his his rookie deal, they had cameras following him around, and he went to Mercedes Benz dealership, and then he went to a jewelry store, and, and he look at all this, all this bling bling, and you know, and he talking about a Maybach and all this, and oh my gosh, our veterans, especially Demar, are like, you just you just got your first deal, rookie, keep that money in your pocket, you know, and so to be able to do stuff like that. To, to uh, get him uh, or to make him feel engaged still uh, uh, is definitely a, a big thing, not just for him, but for all of our guys that are injured. Mike, you've had a couple of days to look at the, the back end of the roster. Where are you at with that 14, 15 spot? Is there anyone who's standing out that maybe has separated themselves a little bit? Uh, you know what? I'd say what uh, Monty and 
<clears throat> in the West. They've done a great job of, of uh, getting guys in training camp that uh, uh, have a great feel for the game, that are good guys, that are going to play hard, <clears throat> and that, you know, where we don't have to spend a lot of extra time uh, with their attitude or, or, or even trying to teach them because they're in here all the time and or they pick it up very easily. So, uh, you know, a, a lot of guys are, are – are, uh, making their presence shown, you know. Uh, I thought Isaiah <clears throat> did a great job, and, you know, he's on a two-way deal, but he, he did a great job today hitting the glass. Uh, Isaac did a great job hitting the glass, and not only that, both those guys, they knocked down a couple of catch-and-shoot threes, and then they were great defensively. Um, it, you know, uh, uh, ter uh, uh, Terry is, man, he's about as tough as they come his physical presence uh, on the floor, whether it's offensive rebounding and or defending, uh, is, is second to none for, for a young guy. Roderick's a guy that's picked up the stuff really, really, really uh, easily. Uh, Scal has shown that he's a worthy vet of, in being here. So they're, they're, they're li I'm, and I'm not trying to be quote unquote political about it, but but every guy, we've almost, we've talked, as a staff, we've almost talked about every guy at different times after practices that just kind of made us raise our eyebrows and go, mm, okay, uh, he's adding to camp. Now, at the end of the day, will he make the team or will he be in the G League or will that happen? I, this or that happen? I don't know. But uh, you feel good about the guys that we have in camp right now and the progress, not only that they're making, but how they're helping push all of the guys in front of them. Mike, I know obviously these guys are spending a lot of time together in here, getting their work in on the floor. Do you know of any of them spending personal time together and the team bonding outside of the gym and outside of the facility? I mean, I, I don't know. I'm sure they do. I, you know, I like Malik, anytime he goes golfing, it seems like Keegan is with him, you, you know. Um, so I, I'm, I'm sure they are, but uh, I, I, I don't know. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Thanks guys. Appreciate it.